Today, we dive into the complex world of architectural photography. This is Behind the Shot. Hi, welcome to Behind the Shot. I'm Steve Brazel, and this is the show where we try and get inside the mind of a great photographer by taking a closer look behind one of their shots from conception to completion and all the stories and challenges that happen in between. Quick heads up for you. You can find a blog post associated with this and every episode that I do, along with any links that I mention, a small sample gallery of my guests' work for that particular show, over at the website. It's at BehindTheShot.tv as well. There are links and a little bit of information down in the description on YouTube. It's right down below the like and subscribe buttons, so you can head down there if you happen to be watching on YouTube. I'm going to jump right into my guest this time around because there's a lot that I want to cover not only with my guest, but on the shot that we're going to talk about today, because the shot is, it's one of those genres of photography I'll never do because I just think it's its its so precise and it's so difficult. I want to welcome to the show Czech Republic-based commercial photographer, Jerry Lisler. Jerry, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great, actually. It's so good to have you here. Did I pronounce your last name right, by the way, Lisler? You did it. You did it correctly. You did it better than most of the Czech people do. It's not okay, like good. Czech, uh, like typically. So you did great. So where in where in Czech Republic are you? It's in the mountains. Like Czech Republic is a very small country. It's like like in the heart. It's like basically a heart of Europe, and we are right in the middle, and we are very small. So uh, typically, uh, most people, most uh, like foreigners, they know Prague, which is like the capital city, and I'm not based in there. I uh, hate people. I like to be away. I like to be in the forest. I like to be, uh, and we actually, uh, I'm uh, very close to the city where I was born in the mountains. You basically leave the house and then you are, you are like uh, in the forest and no, no people around. It's so funny to hear you say, I hate people because I, I joke with people that I'm not a fan of humans. So yeah. <laughs> you and I, that's why you I should I, architecture because architecture, architecture doesn't have like, you know, uh, they, they don't have any objections it's it just, it's what it is and then work with it. So, uh, it's not going to uh, throw you curveballs. So I, 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 I love that. And I, and let me just tell the, the viewers slash listeners really quick. Obviously Jerry is in uh, Czech Republic. I'm in Southern California. There will be at times a small delay that can cause, you know, us stepping on each other, part of what the internet is. So we're just going to have fun with it and go with it. For all I know, I'm going to end up with, with construction next door. You never know with the internet. So a uh, couple things I want to hit on for you, because when you and I were going back and forth, deciding on what photo we were going to talk about today, which is Arguably the most complex part of doing this show is I always want to pick a shot that, you know, you, my guests are comfortable talking about. And at the same time, I have questions about, and at the same time, I think has some lessons in it for people who either want to try that specific genre of photography I end up talking about mm -hmm. or, or can learn something that they can apply to their genre. So whenever I look through somebody's website, I look for common threads in people's work. And I got lost in your portfolio. And the reason I think I got lost looking through your portfolio, I mean, I must have spent 45 minutes to an hour browsing your website. Your work is so good. And the one common theme that I see is your use of space. Like there's, there's a white space in your work. And, and I don't mean white space, white space, but I mean almost as though I can picture it in a magazine with ad copy written on top of it. Are you... Am I the only one that sees that? I mean, are you aware of the kind of Probably. openness that's in your images? I'm not actually. Uh, it's just no. I don't think so. I I don't do that. I typically what I uh, I hate wide angle, and I'm very vocal about it. Uh, I'm uh, in in Czech Republic. I typically like I don't want to say teach, but I uh, uh, have workshops, and sometimes the, these uh, camera. Uh, you know, shops, they, uh, they're hosting photographers. So I'm giving talks and I always like, uh, pick on the guys that shoot wide angle. And I hate that. So, uh, I do have a, a wide angle. I consider 17 millimeter. So I do have that in my back just as a backup, but I'm 
don't want to touch it. 99% of what is in my portfolio is like 24 millimeters, 35 or 50. So uh, I typically, every time I, because to me, it seems like very, uh, very easy to stage something when it's wide angle. If it's like close, like cinematic, if it's like closed, you have to, you have the attention of people and you can direct them every, like where you want them to be. And you have to be more precise with the staging, with, you know, with the furniture, with the styling, with everything. So uh, I, I kind of like think about it like that and not about the, you know, the, the white space. So, okay, so this, I could go so deep on that because Let's go. first of all, when you said you didn't like wide angle in my head, it was going to be because you shoot architecture, which in architecture, the biggest mistake I see in most, you know, amateur architecture photos is the lines aren't straight. And obviously the wider you go, the more, you know, effect you get from that wide angle. But I, I really liked the word that you used when you said cinematic, because your shots, your shots are are the human eye to me, right? When I stand, when I browse through your portfolio, any shot that I see, I feel, which I'm assuming is a high compliment for architecture. It is from my mind. I feel like I'm standing there, right? It's that, it's that perspective of view. And yet mm -hmm. your work, every shot that I see on your website, I can see on a double spread in a magazine with a title of an article or something like that. There's this wonderful breathing that the strange word for a photo, but that happens in your work. Mm -hmm. I would love to say that it's, it's intentional. I would say it's uh, subconscious. That's like, uh, I'm not really like, you know, uh, if somebody asks me what my style is, uh, it's very, very difficult for me to describe since like I'm, uh, the, my style is very dictated by the subject there is. If it's a bright interior, it's going to be a bright photo. If it's a dark interior, it's going to be a dark photo. So there is not like, you know, uh, that, that, that was uh, in, uh, what I struggled with uh, when I started photography. Uh, but then like after, after uh, like uh, 10 years, it started like uh, to, started to diminish. So what, uh, what uh, I describe my work is basically like natural, but still like there is something that's like indescribable. Like uh, I, I want to say that it's technical, uh, technical perfection with like uh, everything is uh, everything. Is, th there is still contrast. There is still dark. There is still white you know where the sun where, where the light is coming from and you can uh you know what the main uh source the kelvins the colors are and it's not mixed so uh, uh i hope that answer but it's uh I, I know it's probably very difficult to get a no get a actually sense that that does answer it because it does it does explain why all of your sh again i feel like i'm standing there there's there's a lighting there's an understanding you have of light in your shots. We'll get into that when we get into this shot. There, there's one one other thing on your website I want to talk mm -hmm. about because as I browse through your website, you have multiple galleries, right? You have hotels and resorts, travel and tourism, lifestyle, True. architecture, yeah. food and beverage. They're all different. And yet, yeah. they're all connected. So when somebody comes up to you at a cocktail party and says – you know, very casually, what do you photograph? How do you describe that? I say, I say hotels. I say I shoot hotels because I started, uh, I loved shooting interiors and architecture stuff, but I didn't really enjoy working with architects, to be honest, because it's like, I feel like it's clashing uh, that what they want to photograph, what I want to photograph. And I just want to craft the best image possible, no matter the cost. And I found out that the, the hotels they'll pay for, they'll pay for perfection. And if it takes me one hour, two hours to make an image, I'll do that and they'll pay me. And as a side note, which I didn't account at that time, I, I didn't plan th this at all, but Prague has like 100 hotels per square meter. It's a tourist city, right? And uh, I used to travel there a lot. So I started working uh, for hotels. Uh, it started working my way up and uh, now I'm uh, working in internationally. So, but uh, uh, if somebody asks, I'm shooting hotels. I'm shooting architecture and interiors but for hotels. It was interesting that you, the comment you made about working with architects, 
because what I heard there was architects, it's the building is their baby, right? So they have, they have a story they want told about their building. But the truth is the tenant, the final client, the hotel, and the photographer may see a story that needs to be told in that building that the architect never envisioned standing at a drafting table. And I love that. And you also mentioned that you're working internationally now. Your client list is kind of insane. Microsoft, McDonald's, Chanel, Warner Brothers Discovery, St. Regis, Ritz-Carlton, Hyatt. You've been published in places like Condé Nast Traveler, The Telegraph, The Times, Forbes, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar. As good as you are, with the clients that you have being as, as you know, Fortune 500 as they are, does Jiri ever suffer from imposter syndrome like us normal people? Uh, can you explain imposter syndrome from uh, uh, for me? Yes. So imposter syndrome, and I never thought about the fact that this is probably not an international term. Imposter syndrome is, you know, where, like in the music photography space, we music photographers, I know some amazing music photographers out there, but they still always question, do they belong? Is their work good enough? You know, I've, I've attained this level of success and I don't feel like I deserve it. I'm an imposter. Uh, okay, okay. So basically not me. Uh, so that, uh, Do you ever I mean, lose confidence in your work is a good way to word it. Uh, when I'm on the job, no. When I'm outside the job and I finished it and I delivered it, I'm waiting anxiously for the for the feedback uh like 99 everything is fine but then i see other guys work and i'm like what the hell <laughs> uh and then i'm uh, like not pissed at myself but always i, I uh in i'm uh it, it depends it's uh, you said like my portfolio is diverse and it's based on the clientele i'm working for uh since architecture interiors is where i'm at the strongest that's where uh i can with uh if i was just uh you know uh, just a head without feet without uh hands i would be able to do a great image architectural interior wise but not lifestyle and fnb like uh, food and beverage so that's why i'm pushing myself so in those situations there's always uh time to uh or, or always a way to improve i'm not saying that there isn't any way to improve architecture interior wise since there is every time there is every time it's, it's a problem solving all the time since uh, i'm not in the studio it's not a controlled environment there is guests there's people that I have to work around with. I have to satisfy people who pay me, uh, the investors. I have to satisfy the people who are the marketing managers who have their vision how it should be done. I have to uh, satisfy the uh, the corporate, which actually makes the guidelines because I have to stray, uh, stick to uh, to guidelines. For example, Ritz Carlton, St. Regis. No, not anybody can chew that. It's like ten uh, ten photographers in the EMEA that can chew that uh, globally. I would say it's like twenty. Uh, wow. so th there is, there's, uh, we have to follow, uh, like rules to, so our images look basically similar. It will never look similar, like the same, obviously, but it, uh, it, it should look like similar. So, uh, a lot of the times, uh, it happened to me, uh, with, uh, uh, I'm typically like scouting and looking at the other prey that I can jump on. And like have it, uh, you know, as a hunter, have a trophy. And if I've worked for them, like exactly Ritz Carlton, they're not, uh, they're not prey for me now because I've worked for them. I work with them. I, I want somebody know, uh, somebody new. I want some the best hotel there is, and I want to work for them. So I look at their images, and typically it's great. And I'm like, what the hell? How how is that? I I, I want I want to do that. So. Uh, Lately, lately, I've uh, I, I've known about this brand. I'm not not sure if you know Orient Express. Mm -hmm. If you know uh, yeah. what that is, so uh, I've been looking at their imagery, and partially I think it's too perfect. So it, it may be a render, but it's so great, it's so cinematic, and I would love to do something like that, and I would love to push myself. So uh, there's always I have imposter syndrome to put it short. So I hope see, that answers is, your question. Yeah, it de definitely. The, the reason I always start my shows with, like people tune in and they want me to get to the shot right away, but the reason I always start my shows with this kind of getting to know the photographer first, mm -hmm. I want people to know why they should listen to you. And I, and I love 
I kind of love your your mindset. There is one interesting part of your business, though. Your partner in your business is your wife, Lucy, correct? True. Does does working with your wife simplify or add challenges to the, to the business mix? Greatly. It simplifies greatly. I don't have to worry about anything. I'm I'm the child. Uh, I'm the child uh, who I don't have. Uh, I don't know the financial situation. I don't want to know that. I don't care. I just want to know I can buy a new PlayStation game, and I can play it. I have time, and that's all I need. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything about uh, like uh, like the, the whole. Uh, what basically I do? Uh, I'm uh, doing like uh, quotes. I am uh, doing shot lists, uh, mood boards, if such, such a thing is needed, uh, and communicating with clients on site, everything. Uh, but she does. Uh, she does all the management, the boring stuff, the financials, the invoices, the uh, the bureaucracy, the um, what else. She's doing. She's doing the rest. She's doing everything else. So, and I would, I, I would kill myself if I were. I, I, I wouldn't start at all if uh, had I known that it would be uh, having uh, like uh, having business or doing business would be this about this because I, you don't want that. It's like right. you. I, I want to shoot pretty hotels. I want to shoot the best architecture. I want to be one of the best, and I don't want to be bothered with, you know trying to not say that word. Uh, I don't want to say like offensive language. So I'm uh, trying to hold, hold myself tight. So I want to, I want to transition to some photography questions. You can say whatever you want, by the way, I can always mark Go the ahead. show explicit if I need to, but no, no, I, no. Ask, I ask every guest this question, or at least I've started to, what makes a great photo great? Uh, I would say uh, in my, in my, uh, it, it can be either what I think about the photo, which I think uh, most of the time uh, I think it's great and it's not a favorite of the client. So typically, what I'm drawn uh, w since I'm doing this, I, if somebody asks, I'm not a uh, photographer, I'm a businessman. Uh, I, I run a business, so if it's if it satisfies a client and it's a great photo. By all means, it's a great photo for them. It, it's going to make them uh, money, so it's justified, and I'm happy for them that that, that they love the photo. So if it's for the, if client says it's a great photo, then it's a great photo. So in architecture photography, mm -hmm. which by the way, done right, done well, needs to be extremely precise in so many ways. When you're commissioned by a resort or a hotel or an architectural gig for whatever, what's generally in your your camera bag? In my camera bag, uh, typically I have like the carry on, right, which is strict. Uh, how many lenses? Um, two, three, four lenses. Uh, tilt shifts. If somebody knows, uh, if uh, other people know uh, what the tilt shift is, it's basically like uh, an architecture where we have the verticals uh, straight, so they are not like about. Uh, that's uh, that's it. Uh, it's two lenses. Uh, then it's some extenders so that I can uh, do uh, from 17 millimeter. I can go uh, 24. From 24, I can go 35. And then there is 24, 70, and 100 macro. Uh, for okay. for lifestyle or for food, uh, two camera bodies, uh, and then there is a big uh, big case uh, which I have in two sizes depending what uh, uh, airline we're flying with. Uh, some have it as oversized, and uh, I found that sometimes it get lost, it gets lost, and that's not a good feeling to uh, lose your tripod. So uh, typically, uh, all the lighting gear and the heavy stuff goes in uh, in the um, you know uh, checked in. That's the word in the checked-in baggage. Yep, and uh, and that's it. That's it. Laptop, uh, tablet, uh, like typical. It's not. It's not like. What camera bodies do you shoot? I'm shooting Canon. Okay, awesome. And w lighting wise, what what are the lights that you tend to take with you? Are the, are we talking speed lights? Are we talking you know? Speed lights. Yeah. I have one. I started. I actually started with four speed lights uh, many many years ago, uh, and now, now I'm just using uh, mono uh, mono blocks, mono lights, uh, battery powered flashes. To uh, gotcha. I'm bringing usually two uh, with me just in case if it's something big. Uh, last two 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 weeks ago, uh, we were in Saudi Arabia and like the dynamic range. There is like outside, inside. There is white sand outside. It's like 
insane so the more light we can get in uh and get in the interior the better so uh that's uh that's about it okay so before we jump into the shot just a quick reminder for everybody this show every show that i do i write a blog post about my guest a small sample gallery of their work that type of thing and you can find all of that over at the website it's behind the shot.tv of course you can find me at stevebrazel.com but head to the website behind the shot.tv to find this episode i embed the youtube video there stuff like that and of course on youtube down below the like and subscribe buttons in the description you'll find some information too youtube doesn't have the full blog post but it has any links that we mentioned that are also in the blog post. So that way you can kind of find it anywhere that you need to go. So for today's shot, Jerry and I went back and forth picking a shot and I kept, I even pulled my wife in at one point. Like I said, I lost 45 minutes to an hour looking through your website It going, I want that one and I want that one. And I want to talk about that one. And I kept coming back to this shot right here, the pool at the Corinthia Hotel in Prague. This is an indoor pool. And for those of you that are on audio, I will describe this shot for you in just a minute so that you can kind of get the picture in your head. A lot of people tell me they listen as they're driving. They don't want to see the shot until they hear it. I describe the shot verbally, which usually is a nightmare. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> then they go look at the shot and see if they had the right picture in their head. But let, let's start here. When you shot this shot, what lens would you have used for this perspective here? Uh, this was 35, most okay. likely. Was this a tilt shift or just a prime? Uh, it was 24 millimeter with an extender, so 35. Okay, it was tilt, tilt shift, shift though? Okay. Yes. And what body would this have been on? Do you know? 5DS. Canon. And Oh, interesting. So you're going for the, at, at that point in time with, with DSLRs, you're going for a high megapixel count. Uh, it's not, you can basically, if you have uh, a lot of megapixels, you can go, uh, the, if, if you have 24 or 35, you can still crop and the effect will be the same as not having the extender or having the extender. So uh, more megapixels means more uh, flexibility. I don't shoot that. I don't shoot to crop typically. So uh, 50 megapixels is just a safe bet. Okay, makes sense. Now, when you shot this, manual mode, I'm assuming? Definitely. You want, to, you, you want to be in uh, full control. Okay. Do you know what your aperture shutter ISO was here? Aperture, uh, it's typically, this would be like F, uh, F10, F, uh, F11, something, okay. something like that. Uh, ISO wise, ISO wise, uh, if, uh, if I'm using flashes, uh, then it's typically to 250 uh, to 400, depending uh, if there is enough light I can get out of the flashes. And uh, then it's uh, the shutter speed is typically to, uh, you know, to get, uh, we're always shooting brackets to get to capture the most dynamic range uh, there is. So it would be, uh, again, like, like a five you know, five bracket minus one, minus, uh, minus two, minus one, zero plus one plus two. So something around, uh, something like that probably. Okay. So basically you're HDRing it with your, with your exposure brackets. What, what about white manually? Balance? Exactly. Exactly. Would you have done white balance manually? Uh, white balance, we are shooting raw, so I don't really care. I don't want to impress. If, if I want to impress client, uh, and he's looking behind my shoulder, I would nail the white balance so he can see that, uh, Nowadays, I don't do that. Uh, there is two types. Uh, what uh, I fail to say is that I'm shooting tethered. And you can shoot oh. either tethered with, uh, with a wire into a laptop, which I used to do. And now I hate it because it's slow. Uh, it's not as flexible. And nowadays, I'm using a cam ranger. Uh, a lot of architectural photographers are doing that. It's basically like a router, which you like hang next right. to your camera and connect it and then it uh, transfers wirelessly a jpeg into into an ipad uh, but we can wirelessly i can hand it to a client we can adjust shears we can adjust curtains we can adjust everything and i don't have to keep looking at, like going back to uh, to the computer tripping over wires etc etc so uh we typically what i do is i'm always shooting raw and i'm shooting auto white balance and I'll, i'm adjusting everything in post 
Okay, so two things. One, my buddy Ian Spanier, who's uh, he photographs athletes and and models and a ph- phenomenal uh, photographer, really understands like he uses Cam Ranger and he loves it. But you also made the comment that if somebody was looking over your shoulder, you would then not do auto white balance and you'd nail it in camera just to make sure what they see is great. I'm curious if if, if when you uh, walk into yeah. a room room like this and and you want to make sure for whatever reason, no, 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 I want to nail the white balance now. What are you doing? Are you using a gray card? What are you doing to nail the white balance? Uh, not at all, because like uh, this is not a studio shot. Uh, the light behaves; it takes color to uh, whatever it like you know bounces from. So uh, it shouldn't really like, for example, the ceiling probably should be like very gray, like very like zero percent color. And here it would be around four percent, five percent of uh, of the color it picked. So it would be way bluer uh, because of the because of the pool. So. This is uh, this is basically uh, I, I I don't want to be like technical because if you are technical then every mood everything is lost right right if you want to make a sunrise scene correct it would be way too blue it's not like it, it shouldn't be blue so uh, sometimes there there are times uh, if I would be shooting for uh, um, manufacture uh, or furniture or something like that and we want to be precise I would use the uh, the uh, the gray card or something along uh, something like that, but uh, if uh, it depends on the for example here in the shot it's daylight, the the main light and the, the all the all the lighting does uh, or the main source of light here is the sun it's the daylight so there is no point for me to use uh, manual manual uh, or sorry auto white balance or manual rather sorry right uh if would if you uh, because what i'm differentiating what is the source of light if we are shooting nighttime interior or maybe exterior uh what am i uh taking the white balance from here it's the sun meaning 5500 kelvin something like that uh if it's an interior shot if if there's like small lamps uh that are the practicals i'm calling them practical lights then it's going to be around three uh 3300 kelvin something like that so then it may the camera may mistake even when i'm mixing i'm trying to make it as simple verbally so i apologize but i'm typically adding my own lighting uh even constant lighting which i forgot to mention is that i'm bringing two flashes and one constant light source which is like a it's basically a light tube it's a light tube that i can adjust the uh the color uh it's like uh the kelvins uh on the on it's not rgb it's like typical kelvins so i can adjust it to match the other lighting that's in in the interior it's all about control it's all about the control i'm curious so the light tube which is constant light and and by color basically yes exactly i'm i'm curious why why some flash and some constant why not all constant or all flash uh and the answer is very simple uh light intensity you will never constant light will never be as powerful as as the flash okay so if there is a lack of daylight for example bathroom why use flash you can use uh because flash is a small source right it's like a small bulb you can make it bigger if you shoot it into the ceiling for example then it's going to be uh, you can see it above me right now i'm lit by uh, by a reflector sh- shot into the white ceiling and it's uh, providing like a very wide uh very wide a light source but uh in uh, for example in some scenes the the ceiling is not as uh is not white or is is colored uh that that not that not uh, that's not possible then to use that so uh for for bathrooms where there is no daylight uh and i can uh, use uh my uh my constant light i can then make the softbox I, i'll just drag the shutter i'll make it two two seconds four seconds even and i'll make the light source as big as i can by light painting it's basically a technique called light painting where right. you just use a long shutter speed and then you can create you can walk around and make make the light source so big and it's it's preferred way, my preferred way, actually. So I use flash when I have to battle the sun. So I want to describe this shot. And as I say, I describe every shot that I have on the show verbally for the people about 50%, 52%, something like that, listen to the audio feed, even though we're talking about a photograph. And then they go look at the photograph on the website. And I have to say, I always joke that I'm going to butcher it. and It's going to be really hard. 
describing this photo verbally may be the hardest one I've ever had at a hundred percent. This is going to be the longest verbal description I have ever done. My apologies to Jerry for the fact that I'm about to talk for a really long time, but this shot has so much that you need to understand that I'm even afraid if you go look at it on the website, you're going to miss some of this. It's that, that good, right? The best way to describe this. And first of all, let me say it's a landscape orientation shot. And the best way to describe it to you is I want you to picture a luxury hotel indoor pool photo that you might see in a major land, you know, a, a real estate or hotel or travel magazine. This thing radiates luxury through a photograph. My God, you're on an upper floor next to an indoor pool. You're at one end of the pool looking across the pool at windows on your left and windows on the far side and a wall on your right hand side. And the shot is kind of this mix of, of, uh, you know, wonderful geometry, right? The right side is a wall. It looks like it's large slate tiles around the bottom, about a foot off the floor are small square up lights and down lights. So it's a light that shines up the wall and down the wall. The wall, interestingly enough, doesn't go all the way down the room. Before you get to the windows, the wall ends. And so you know that you can turn a corner there and, and the wall turns right. You know, the room turns right beyond the wall. On the left-hand side is entirely framed windows and there's sun rays coming in and beaming across the ceiling. So you have very distinct sun ray shadow, sun ray shadow. There's two large benches there that look like they're like a bamboo type wood. At the far end of the room, through the windows, because again, far end is also these, these full height windows. In fact, they go up, it looks like above the ceiling. Like when you get past the end of the pool, the ceiling raises up and Outside those windows is a large, beautiful city skyline way in the distance. There are four what look like bamboo lounge chairs. They have gray cushions on them. And there's one more of those big wide benches there. The ceiling is maybe concrete. There's three recessed grooves in the ceiling. And again, you have these rows of light coming in from the windows on the left-hand side. The decking around the pool also looks like bamboo slats. The coping around the pool is kind of an off-white, and at the far end of the pool is one of those normal handicap handles that you would use to grab onto, those silver handles to, to climb in or out of a pool. It's like an infinity edge pool. The water level is even with the deck, not lower than the deck. And at the inside the pool, the tiles are rectangular at the angle you're looking is the length, the, the length of the tiles. The water is this beautiful, rich, realistic blue. The windows are reflected in the water and not clipped. And this is where everybody would mess up, right? Those windows are reflected in the water and I see the skyline in the water. And I would argue, one of the things that really makes this shot is the color that Jerry was mentioning he thinks about in his shots. It's warm outside light and it comes in and it hits that wall on the right-hand side, keeping that warm, wonderful glow. Only the light beams really are lighting up the ceiling. So they're really obvious, super warm light outside and inside. And then contrast that with a wonderful blue color on the water. And every single line is true. The verticals are vertical. The horizontals are horizontal. Everything is perfectly balanced. Really, honestly, this is, when I think of looking through a high-end travel magazine, this is the shot that I picture seeing. Did I miss anything? You didn't. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I've never like thought about it like this at all. So hearing it, he, like hearing you describe it is perfect. Wonderful. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do when I do it with my own photos, in all honesty, when I really want to mm -hmm. find out if a shot is 
uh, good or bad and I'm on the edge, I'll go through it and I'll describe it to myself sometimes out loud because it's strange what you sometimes see when you try and verbalize it. I, I'm I'm dying to know the story behind this shot. So before I dive in with my questions, tell me about this shot. So you described it amazingly. And now I will shatter all your thoughts, how it was created, because it's out of the ordinary, what I would do. Uh, first of all, this was for a client uh, and it was totally not planned at all. Uh, what happened is that uh, I'm known be because I've been doing it for uh, for a long time in the Czech Republic. So the the hoteliers they know me, and one once they called me and th this lady and she called me, hey, we are in a bit of a trouble. I just uh, started working in this hotel, and you don't know me. I've been watching your work for a very long time, which I always like to hear, right? So, uh, but we need your help uh we need you to shoot our meeting rooms tomorrow and i'm like mm, okay that's very not typical uh typically we do it weeks months ahead uh but i'm i'm, I'm available and i would love to add you as a prey i would love to have a trophy right. of working for corinthia so let's do that uh arrived the other day uh it was two days uh, two days of shooting and first day we we did a little scouting and then uh i was like let's let, let's see what is around the hotel so maybe maybe but we are shooting the, the goal and i'm being paid for to shoot um meetings so what happened is that uh, uh during the scout we visited this spa and i've seen this uh spa shot multiple times and i was it was not what i thought it was it looked different in the images than it looked in real life. So it that, that's like, obviously, uh, it's a 2D medium versus 3D stereoscopic human right. eyes, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I went in there and I was like, oh my God, this is like one of, because it, uh, there, in Czech Republic in Prague, there isn't that many skyscrapers. I think there is like three. Uh, so, uh, well, I mean, Prague people, they, they'll kill me for that, but it's Corinthia. It's the, the those two that you can see in, in the view and it's one other hotel. So let's capture the panorama. Let's capture, let's capture the view. So I'm always thinking when I'm working for clients about the USPs, uh, ma mainly like, uh, hotel, uh, hotel, uh, hotels, USPs, meaning, uh, unique selling points to me. The selling point here is like just look at the windows look out right. of the window uh you just want to be in the pool and look outside right so and it's the shape of the room and i wasn't thinking about anything else i just want to have uh the mirror i want to have the mirror of the of the pool and i want to reflect the so the angle was basically set the camera will be here i want to uh cut as much of the room because the room is big i want to catch as, uh, cut uh, out as much of the room as possible so people just see the view they just go through the image and see the view. Uh, where, when can we shoot this? Because uh, it's for hotel, uh, it's for guests, and so we had to schedule it. And I was like, I want to shoot an image here. I know it's not scripted, it's not planned. Let's get, uh, let me let me get access in here, and I'll shoot one image for you, an extra for free. I want it in my portfolio. And then they typically say yes. If I, if it doesn't, if if it means that uh, it, we'll have to scrap one image, it's a problem typically. But this was an extra, so they're fine. Uh, so what happened is that I planned to. Uh, I believe it was. Uh, uh, it was uh, morning the next day, and when we arrived uh, on the other, because the it, it's basically when the guests are not there so we are not interrupting anyone and it was uh, so that uh, the time of day would uh, would be sunrise we had to be there we th there was no other way of of shooting that basically uh other other than the the hotel closing the pool which can sometimes happen if they really want the image and it's planned, they have to, or they, they don't have to, but I'll strongly recommend them do so or doing so. Uh, we went there and it was overcast. It was so overcast that it was ugly, but I shot it anyway. And what I planned is because I'm typically doing that uh, when there is a high rise uh, because the windows are 
dirty, right? There's raindrops, uh, there is smudge, and you don't really, you want to, re you can retouch that when it's like a green outside the forest, something like that, but not the skyline uh, of this sort. So that would be, that was one obstacle that I had to overcome was the smudge. Uh, and the other would be dynamic range. Luckily, it was uh, overcast. So the dynamic range was very simple. Five brackets, natural light, no flash. You don't have to do anything. But then I had to fi fix the view, right? So what I've done, and uh, that is what I typically do, is you turn the lights off in the room. So it's the, the windows are not giving any reflection of the interior. And I stand as close to the window as possible to capture the different angles with, uh, with another camera. I have two. So with the other camera, I'll, I'll just go to the window right next to the, to the glass and shoot the view left, right. And so I have covered, uh, so I have all the panorama. And then I just stop me when it, it starts to get complicated, right? No, no, and no. I'm I'll loving just, this. I'll just paste the view and do it exactly as it is. So that's what I would have to do. But it was overcast that day, right? So, and we didn't have another shoot scheduled. So what I told them, hey, I have a, uh, because I live in the mountains, I don't live in Prague. It's like two hours drive, but I didn't want to go there. <laughs> I was lazy. So I told them, hey, I work with an assistant. I have a couple. So let me send him, let me send the guy. I'll brief him what needs to be done. I told him, hey, uh, I, I need you to shoot the view specifically. Just go to the window, you know, because he's seen me do that many times. Just go 24 millimeters, go uh, the same settings I would do, 250 ISO, F8, F10, doesn't really matter because the, the view we will manipulate in, in post-production. So you just want to get sharp view without any reflection in the windows, typically. So, and he went the other morning and it was perfect. It was like this. Uh, and I was so lucky and I didn't plan for it uh, because if the if this would have happened when I was shooting that, the dynamic range, it would be insane. So we would have to use flash. I would have to do all kinds of stuff to even try to do it. But I was, I was lucky. So, so you're telling me that the view, basically what's, what happened is the is, view. Uh, the view is like four shots uh, from each window, uh, from each side. One is for, to the left side, right? Uh, and it's still, it, it, it's very accurate. It's the same. It's manipulated. So it's one to one, basically. But but wouldn't those pictures that you take with, with the second camera, the, the, the second day of shooting, the perspective would be so far off? Yeah, it is. So you have to manipulate it, but, but that's why you have the reference. You have the reference oh, because you had the reference, right. From the right, other right. So you, you could overlay. I had, I had wow. yeah, it was just overcast. So I can just, you know, lower the opacity and massage it so it looks, it, it's showing the same information. So this, this sunrise would happen. It didn't happen for us. And sometimes, sometimes this, when I am, uh, when I'm going to a remote location and I don't have contingency day, we have to like make it work. So it happened uh, uh, when we were shooting Kempinski in Slovakia. It was foggy outside, totally, and I didn't have any time. So what I told the guy, the marketing manager, happened to have a DSLR. So I just told him, hey, put it on manual or AV, put these settings in, and stand where I stood. And here is the this is the view I need you to capture, and be be there at this exact moment to shoot the view for me. So I told him the time, the place, and what to use. If he didn't have DSLR, I would just told him, use your phone. Doesn't matter. So <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're saying it was in essence, because you would have, if it had been right the day that you shot your shot, you would have still gone it up to those nightmare. windows to avoid the reflections and still made four shots of outside anyway. So you were going to end it would, up. It would kill me though. Say again. Mm -hmm. It would kill me still because the light is going through the smudge. Through well, the but that's what very that's what I was going to say though was if if yeah. if everything had been looking right that day, you still would have shot the pool. You would have done four whatever shots through the windows and. 
because of the the dynamic range, you would have had to use Flash. So really, this was easier. Uh, what I would have, if I was commissioned to shoot the pool like this, I would schedule them to close it on uh, for sunset shoot, which would mean that the sun would not be beaming, blasting uh, like right to the camera through the windows, making it more ugly, but it would just illuminate the view. And this would be darker, the interior, if you know what I mean. If I had perfect control about everything and I was to sell the view, I would sell the view by shooting at sunset. That was not possible. It would be at the time where guests would be bathing and they didn't want like, they didn't want to interrupt guests. So my only view uh, or my only window to shoot at this location was morning. So that's what I ran with and tried to make it the best. And I was so lucky. Uh, what I would do is I would maybe uh, to fix the windows if it was that bad, because I sh I've seen it uh, from the assistants. Uh, I, I told him, hey, the windows are ugly. Overshoot. Shoot as much as possible. Just tilt your camera. Do this. You know, move move so there is not as so i in the end i received like 100 images of just the view of different so i just had to stitch where there is no smudge that it's not as dirty and if the camera is very close to the glass it gets diminished the smudge right. so that's 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 better uh but still the dynamic range and everything was uh horrendous and the uh, of uh, the sun beaming through like this it the windows the glass reflects everything that is in the interior so you also have to like adjust the angle and move and really fine tune just the view shot of the camera. So you have basically a blank slate. You want to have the perfect, perfect uh, perfection that you can then make worse and make it ma manipulate it, blur it and uh, make it so it looks like this. And he also shot a reference shot for me. So I knew how the light would interact with the place because you can see the right side it's so i just uh in the photoshop this is photoshop i'm sorry it's just this problem problem solving so what what i've done is i used his shot to get a mask of how the sun beamed through the windows to the right side to the right wall and then made it the same color as it was in uh, in the reference shot from the sun with with the sunlight, because Maybe. that to me is one of the big problems. Is when you're assembling yes. shots shot close to the windows at different angles, each shot's temperature is going to be slightly different based on the angle of the sun. The inside of the room from the day you took it is going to be slightly different. So you're now it was it was shots. very cold. So what I did what I did was. Uh, because I knew that I will replace the view for a sunrise view and it will make it warm and bright. So what I what I did is made it brighter, uh, the raw files, my overcast, and I made it warmer. I made it like 6,000 uh, 6, K or something like that. I made it warmer. And then in post-production, I even added even more and even more. Wow. Okay. So then next question is, when you're combining multiple shots that are at a different parallax, basically to the windows, is there any is there any tip you could tell people that that they could do to make so, that type of composite mm -hmm. easier? Is there anything uh, you, you need... do during a shoot or in your head that you're you're aware of that they should be aware of to make that end composite go together easier? Like. Yeah. Uh, so drawing a mask when you have uh, it's not blooming outside, which it, it wasn't blooming for me around the windows. That's why you need to use flash to make it to tame it, to make it to compress the dynamic range. But uh, you, I had a blank slate basically because it was overcast. So the light, I had giant softbox every, everywhere. So it was like perfect for me to just, you know, pen tool around the window. So what I sent uh, to my assistant is I showed him, hey, this is the view. This is uh, this is my shot. I'll replace the view. Shoot it like this with the sun beaming in so I know what the sun is doing and I can make the mask of the sunlight. Right. And then shoot the view and ma make sure to focus to uh, to do the left side and to do the to to do, uh, fr do front and to the right side so I have all the information. Overshoot. Uh, it's dirty. The, the windows are very dirty. So make sure to capture as much information as possible. So we have a lot to work from. So 
composition and use tripod. Yeah, uh, obviously. For, uh, yeah. Uh, that's uh, because uh, th I forgot to mention my tripod. It's like a git, so it's like uh, really right stuff level. Uh, very expensive. Uh, it will survive an apocalypse. It, it will not move if somebody uh, <laughs> walks past, right? So uh, you need to use a tripod for this. It's not a snapshot. It's planned. We uh, on 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 site. We moved everything with the camera ranger. Uh, we styled so it's perfect. Uh, we. Uh, one point we may have used a measuring tape to make sure it's like the exact centimeters away from each other the the lounge chairs uh, not sure we do that when uh, uh, with meetings uh with a rope uh here i'm not, no, not not so sure but we made sure that everything is precise and what i would have also done uh now is i would shoot one daylight uh, one with the practicals off meaning all the lights that you can see the overheads right the spotlights would be turned off Every light would be off, so just the daylight, and then one or uh, one more bracket, basically, so five brackets or, or one bracket with of five images, uh, just the daylight, and then one bracket, five images again, or maybe seven, just to capture all the uh, all the dynamic range and the lights, the practicals on. So I have flexibility in post production. And and I didn't mention there are recessed lights in the ceiling. I should have mentioned that. But composition can make or break a shot like this. Leading lines, rules of thirds, spirals, geometry, lines being true. Yeah. You you made the comment early on that you knew you wanted the skyline, so you knew you where you were gonna stand and where you were gonna shoot from. But let's be honest, you could yeah, have gotten yeah. that skyline three feet to the right or three feet to the left. What's in your head as you chose the exact spot on this side of the pool? I would love to tell you some technical stuff why I arrived at the point I arrived. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, truly. Uh, I, I just knew that, hey, this is where I want to be. I want to... Uh, uh, I, I want to position the, the, the tower. Uh, it's called V Tower because it, it's in the shape of V, uh, like, right? Uh, so... What I wanted to do is I want to capture that. Uh, so it's like the prominent uh, skyline uh, to that side. And then I just position myself accordingly and uh, made sure that uh, it's one point perspective, meaning all the leading lines lead into one point. So it's not a two point perspective, but a one point perspective. Uh, I, I believe it's also called different uh i'm not sure how uh, what's the different name for that though uh uh but it's like when you're shooting uh, tra uh rail tracks right um uh, right. it, it's it just converges in one point one specific point of the picture these the types the of images point, are yeah. typically one of the strongest exactly these types of shots are typically one of the strongest when i'm delivering those to client however they are really easy to mess up so you need to be extra sure with the styling with the staging so that it really is a one point perspective here since this is not a typical like cube or rectangle it's uh, oddly it's oddly sh uh, shaped uh skyscraper so it it gives me more flexibility to mess up but i did my best i like i think i i, I was searching for this composition for like 5 minutes and then uh, when the the tripod was set so it it showed what i wanted it to show then we started moving the furniture Really, the leading lines in this shot that take you out to that skyline are so good. There is one question. I, I want to close out with post-processing stuff. But the rays on the ceiling, obviously. Post-production. Yeah, post-production. Was there a plug-in or did you paint those manually? Actually, I'll, a huge shout out uh, to Sean Talbot, uh, Canadian photographer, which I've done a different interview one two years back and he's an architectural photographer aspiring he wants to work for for uh, for married uh, more so we discussed uh, how i would do that personally and he had this plugin i don't know what that plugin is though so i just sent him uh, sent him the tiff file and, and because we talked about it for I, i'm not sure how i sent him the picture i think and told him what do you think and he's like i would uh, i i have a perfect plugin for that for the sun flare it would make it great and i was like okay i'm gonna send you a tiff file everything merged together show me what you can do and he sent me this and i'm like dude that's perfect you know what's nice <laughs> is so so many people would overcook it and you know really put these beams in but they're so subtle that yeah, just so well done. You know, on your workflow, 
when you have this many shots that are going to be assembled? Do you do any processing to each shot before the composite or uh, do you yeah. composite and then adjust? What What is your workflow there for getting them all to match? I'm typically doing uh, making a capture one uh, session, which means uh, because I love the folder structure and the naming. Uh, it it creates, and I'll uh, sh uh, I dump all the all the memory cards into Capture One. I'll name it because for for a hotel, uh, for example, for Marriott, you need to name it properly. Uh, it needs to uh, to have the naming so it's it can be uploaded into their uh, the, the, so on, onto their servers, and then I'll select the ones I need want to work with. I'll put them into select folder from uh, capture one and then the capture one selects i will import into lightroom and from lightroom i'm doing basic editing uh syncing all the uh, the white balance so it's correct in all of these and let's say minus 50 highlights plus 50 shadows to get more dynamic range uh remove uh the geometrical or whatever that's called uh fringing defringe uh that sort of stuff and then load uh load files uh as load as layers into photoshop or something like that and it basically it creates this huge stack of 20 layers in photoshop that i can work work with and massage and pick pick i'm not doing any automatic like hdr at all uh it's always like like a puzzle piecing together different different types of uh of shot together how, how and long mixing would it the practical the daylight this How image, long would it take you to like, assemble this? Uh, th this was easy uh, with the windows because it's a rectangle, so it's not like it, it's easy. This would be like 40 minutes. Wow, you're a better man than I am. I'm telling you, because this just is, it's such a great shot, Jerry. It's so good. I'm, uh, I'm I'm sorry uh, that it, it's like uh, sometimes I feel like it's a lie, right? Because it was not shot like that. So, but you know that's the. But that's, that's the commercial reality. photography. A, I mean, that, the truth is, if you yeah. look at food photography, half the stuff or beverage photography, half the stuff isn't real. So again, correct. Just so good. Thank you so much for sharing how you made this. I really, really do appreciate it. I don't want to sound like this is a norm. It's definitely not a norm. This is a problem solving at its finest, to be honest with you. It's not what I do day to day when I'm shooting something. It's much simpler. I just wow. want to make that clear so that no uh, people don't expect that everything everything they see when uh, they look at the hotel site uh, is a complete lie. It's not. No, but this, this is so well done, man. It's so well done. So let's let's switch gears here really quick. I want to close out with a speed round. I'm going to ask you a question. And for the speed round, all I want you to do is just whatever first pops into your head, go ahead and answer. Okay? Do my I'll do my best, yeah. Okay. What is your <laughs> What is your top photography tip? Plan, plan ahead. Okay? Has to be a different one. What is your top architecture photography tip? Prepare. Kind of the same. Is it, the, is it similar, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's okay. That's uh, all right. Okay. Hmm. Can I? Um, okay. So architecture. Hmm. Man. Like depends what is what the goal is, right? Is it for your portfolio? Is it for the client? God damn. The, 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 uh, really, the, these are really hard questions. Uh, to answer, to be honest, uh, it's not about the gear. Uh, definitely not. So I would still, because I'm a control freak, I need to have everything in control. I need to plan as much, but still need, you need to make, uh, for example, here in this shot, you need to uh, make the most when it's not playing into your cards. So be flexible. Yeah. Okay. Oh, be flexible. I like that one. What is the biggest photo mistake you've made or almost made? Over retouching. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because more people need to hear that. What is your favorite composition rule if you have one? I love one point perspective, everything going uh, and diverging uh, into one point. Uh, if uh, I can shoot that, I will do that. Okay. Favorite band or performer? 
Hans Zimmer. Ooh, that's going back. Love Hans Zimmer. Favorite drink? Gin and tonic. Specific gin or no? Not really. Uh, I, I don't drink uh, a lot lately, so uh, not really. Okay. But I, lo- uh, I like, uh, I, I love, um, how's it called? I can't recall. Okay. Sorry. Favorite movie or TV show? Uh, two and a half men. Wow. Okay. I love it. Uh, <laughs> is there, last question. I watch that. I watch that. I watch that when I'm retouching, typically. I have other monitor and it's like running in loop. I, you know, people it. wonder why I asked that. You can tell a lot about somebody by the movies that they like or TV shows. For example, I just, lo- we, I just love that humor. We just stumbled on a TV show I had never heard of. Apparently, it's been out since like 2002, 2022. Uh, I'd never heard of it. It's called Resident Alien. And I'm addicted and I, we're into season two now. Uh, absolutely fantastic. So final question. Is there a photographer out there that you think more people should follow? Uh, definitely. I would, if I was them and I would be pissed at, if I want to be pissed at my work, the imposter syndrome, just check, uh, Rupert Peace, for example. Rupert, what's the last name? Rupert Peace, like peace, war and peace. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, also an architecture photographer. I would say he's more, uh, also, uh, more into cinematic, uh, lifestyle. Uh, I love that. I love his approach and his architectural stuff is also like wonderful. I will put a link uh, to Rupert's uh, website or Instagram or something in the show notes at the website behind the shot.tv or in the notes on, in the description over on YouTube. So again, thank you for doing this. Uh, Jerry, if people want to connect with you, if you could, you know, run down your website and your social media stuff. Uh, I would love to do that. My name is uh, making it a bit harder. So it's basically my name, uh, jirelizler.com. That's uh, my website uh, where I have the portfolio. And for the Instagram, the same name, uh, jirelizler uh, on Instagram. And for LinkedIn, I'm typically uh, very active on LinkedIn. It's again, jirelizler. Okay. So that makes it easy for people. It is J-I-R-I-L-I-Z-L-E-R, Jiri Lizler. Uh, go follow him. Again, those links that he just mentioned, I'll ho- have over at the website. I'll have in the description on YouTube as well. Uh, Jerry, thank you so much for do- doing this, man. I so appreciate it. It was wonderful to finally meet you after talking back and forth over email for a while. I apologize for taking uh, for, for me taking such a long time to finally do this. I'm, I loved it, and I'm pissed at myself that it, it took me so long to connect with you. No, 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 not at all. This is this is actually a completely normal time frame, and I just appreciate that I finally got to meet you. If I am ever in Prague, I'm gonna I'm gonna find you and buy you a gin and tonic. <laughs> Definitely, go ahead, and I can hook you up with some really special hotels. I know quite a lot. So, well, again, let me know. Thank you, thank you so so much to my guest this time around, Jerry Lizler. All the links to his website to his social media, all of that type stuff, the photographer that he mentioned, all of those are at the website behindtheshot.tv. If you want to follow me, it's at Steve Brazel, like the country Brazil, but two L's. Uh, you can also find me on any socials out there. It's it's you know Twitter, uh, Blue Sky, Mastodon. I shouldn't say Twitter, it's X, but I'm still going to call it Twitter. It's at Steve Brazel if you want to find me there. If you like what you have seen and you happen to be watching on YouTube, please do hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. You know all of that type stuff. You've watched YouTube enough. And of course, if you are listening on a podcast, Apple podcast, whatever it is. By the way, Apple podcast added transcripts. So if you're on the latest version of iOS, all my shows are going to have transcripts there now. That makes it easy. And if you would, please drop a review wherever you're getting this podcast at. It would make it so, so much easier for people to find the podcast the more reviews that I get out there. And uh, to you, thank you so much for watching each and every show. Make sure you join me next time as I try and get inside the mind of a great photographer by taking a closer look behind the shot. <laughs>